This video is going to be all about mesh grid. The code I'm about to show you in part 031 underscore mesh grid right here, link in the description. All of it works exactly the same in MATLAB as it does in Octave. All right, so let's go ahead and run this first section, control enter. Let's go ahead. I'm going to really need to resize my screen a lot, unfortunately, today, um, but I'm going to do that. Control enter. All right, I just ran the first section here. And what I started off with was I created two vectors, which I named V1 and V2. Almost all the numbers I'm going to use in this video are just going to be arbitrary for examples. I wanted to make them distinctive though. So V1 is multiples of 10 up to 50, no, excuse me, up to 60. And then V2 is a negative counting upward, negative four to negative one. So the function mesh grid takes as input two vectors. So I passed in my V1 and my V2. And what you get back out of mesh grid is two matrices. You do not have to pass in the same size vectors into mesh grid. And I think very regularly, they will be different size vectors. So, you know, my V1 is length six and my V2 is length four, and that's totally fine. Now the matrices that you get out of mesh grid, and you will always get a pair out, are going to have the same number of dimensions. So M1 and M2 here both have four rows and six columns. And if four and six sounds familiar, that's because it is. Length of V2 is four, length of V1 is six. The first vector that you pass into mesh grid, however long it is, that's how many columns there are going to be in your output matrices. However long the second vector is that you pass into mesh grid, that's how many rows you're gonna have in your output matrices. And the first matrix that you get out is going to contain copies of the values in your first vector. And in fact, every row is simply gonna be a copy of that vector. How many copies or rows? Same as the number of values in the other vector. Now your second matrix is gonna have copies of your second vector except transposed. So the columns of the second matrix are gonna be copies of the values in that second vector. And how many copies are there gonna be? The same as the number of values in the first vector. So that's how many columns there will be in this second matrix. Now at this point, a very reasonable question would be, okay, well, what's the point? Why bother? I'm gonna start off with a very simple example. You can do many, many more things with mesh grid, but I think people are familiar with multiplication tables. So that's what I'm gonna start with. Resize my window and run it. All right, and then let's look at what we did here. So again, I start with two vectors. I got a vector named X, it's just one, two, and three. I got a vector named Y, it's a countdown from five to one. I plug those two vectors into my mesh grid function. So two variables in brackets set equal to mesh grid parentheses, my two vectors, X and Y. And I've seen at least one textbook name the results of mesh grid in this pattern, where if like your inputs are X and Y, your outputs are X, X and Y, Y. I'm not sure what the best way is to do this. Certainly if there's more context to whatever you're trying to accomplish, you know, maybe tacking the word matrix onto the end of these variables to indicate that they are matrices rather than vectors over here could be useful, or maybe just putting an M on them to keep the names short. I don't know, find some organization scheme, find some variable naming pattern that works for you that helps you remember what's what. But in any case, my XX matrix is full of copies of the values from vector X. How many copies? Well, as many as there are values in Y. And my YY matrix is the same dimensions, same rows and columns as XX, but it contains copies of the values from Y. In this case, they are transposed, or rather they are placed into the columns rather than the rows. And finally, what I can do then is I can element-wise multiply my XX matrix and my YY matrix using dot star. Now I could do any other operation as well, but in this example, I'm making a multiplication table. And what I end up with is a all pairs multiplication of all the values in X with all the values in Y, and there's the result right there. So one, two, and three have each been multiplied by one, two, three, four, five, two was multiplied by one, two, three, four, five, and then three was multiplied by one, two, three, four, five, and that gives me my results here. Now that was a bit of a weird organization for a multiplication table, so let me scroll down and give you a little bit better one right here. Resize, control enter, much resizing. All right, so in this example, I have just a single vector named X with values one through six. I'm going to mesh grid 
on that same vector. I still need to pass in two inputs, but I'm passing in the same vector twice, which is a perfectly fine thing to do. I'll get out two results, which I have named xx and yy. They will both be matrices. One of those matrices will have the values in x along its rows. The other one will have it along its columns. I'm going to multiply the two together and put it in a new variable named m, and then I get my uh, matrix right here that is a multiplication table. However, I'd like to go a little bit further than that. I'd like to use composition to create an even more organized table, which is what I do right here. I'm going to talk through this code a little bit more detail, but let me see if I can resize my windows to make them uh, to make it all viewable on the screen. I'm going to take some drastic measures. All right, close enough right there. Actually, that won't work unless I have a dot, dot, dot. So let me just add that in. Great. So now I could rerun the code and it would still work. But I got my composed vectors and matrices right here. And the result of displaying out the chart is this right here. And so what I've done is, so I took the vector that I used as the first input and put it along the top row. And then I took the vector that I used as the second input. In this case, it's the same vector, but I put it along this first column. And then to the right, I placed matrix M right there. As long as the rows and columns line up and no row is unpaired with some other row and no column is missing a buddy and whatever it's paired up with, this will work. Now in the upper left corner, I needed to fill in something special. You could, could have filled in zero, or in this case, I chose to fill in not a number because that's not really part of my multiplication table. I want to be able to see like, oh, four times five, what's that? And then trace it down here and see, oh, that's 20. So I just put in a not a number right up here. Resizing and continuing on down. Now, maybe you aren't convinced that this can do anything other than multiplication tables, and that'd be pretty reasonable at this point. I do wish I had a more real world example, but literally any time that you have two lists of numbers and what you want to calculate is not an element wise operation. It's not like pairing up numbers between the two, but an all combinations operation, like literally each and every number in one vector needs to have a calculation made with each and every single other number in the other vector, that's when mesh grid comes in handy. So let me run this section and then I'll walk through the code. That error is on purpose. I will get to that in a moment, but let me scroll back up to the top. So I have another example vector x, uh, even numbers from 8 to 16. Another example vector y, even numbers from 4 to 10. Nothing special about these in particular. Scrolling on down, I feed those vectors into mesh grid as the inputs in the parentheses. I get two matrices out, xx and yy. xx contains a bunch of copies of x, yy contains a bunch of copies of y. And suppose, for whatever reason, I want to know the rounded sine of the values in the x matrix plus the cosine of the values in the y matrix. Why do I need to know that? I don't know. I'm just trying to show you something different and complicated compared to just a straight multiplication. So I do all this, and my result is a matrix. There's my result matrix right there. And I have done an all pairs calculation of the sines of the x's plus the cosines of the y's. If I had tried to do the same thing just with the vectors, with x itself and y itself, without using mesh grid, it just doesn't even remotely work. Like the, the arrays have incompatible sizes, so it's just not going to work. And finally, let's try and do that weird alignment that I did before. Let's do that again. Now I'm going to move the code over so that it's way far on the left here because I've got to make my window narrow to actually show it. All right, so I made this nice little chart here, right? What was the initial vector that I used as input? What was the second vector that I used as input? And then what was the resulting data uh, from my calculation right here? And the way I'm creating this chart is this composition right here. So in order to pair up with the number of columns that result from Y transpose next to the result matrix, I need to have not a number followed by the horizontal vector X. And then so that I have the right number of rows along this column to pair up with the result matrix, I got to transpose Y. If I don't, it absolutely will result in an error. Yeah, because I cannot horizontally concatenate Y by itself and the result matrix. The dimensions just don't match up. So I got to put a transpose right there. All right, again, the key thing about mesh grid is you got two vectors. They might be the same length. They might be different lengths. Doesn't matter. But you want to do an all combinations calculation of all the values in the one vector with 
all the values in that second vector. Mesh grid is going to be your buddy for accomplishing that. And that is all for this video.